Let's f***ing roll. Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the McBaster studio here in Foco, USA. You're listening to the Salty MF Goat. I'm Brad Banyas. Today's guest is Charles Mayfield. He is the owner and CEO of a company called Feral Life. Uh, they're in the cosmetics kind of uh, regenerative farming area. And he's going to tell you everything about why uh, you shouldn't be using the pharmaceutical type cosmetics. But uh, we, we might get into some shit. So first off, before I get started, uh, you'll notice behind me the McBastard studio is being renovated. So we are we're in a, a kind of blank room except our lovely lady on the surfboard. Uh, Ad Normus will be bringing in some just amazing designs. So that'll be on our next podcast. Looking forward to it. But please, Goat Nation, uh, welcome Charles Mayfield. Welcome to the show, buddy. Good to be here. Yeah, man. It's awesome. Good to and, see you. And good luck with the <laughs> renovation. It's, yeah, uh, I thought it's all these uh, glue strips on here with this. It's uh, really exciting. But I've got John Belushi was behind you, so you're you're in good company. And then we've got a very nice-looking young lady in a bikini underwater on a yes. surfboard. So uh, Can you imagine making had, an animal house today? We had to improvise, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did good. And I got all my, I got all my salty... Swag, yeah, man, swagged out, baby. Freaking top notch here, bro. We don't, we don't mess around. I appreciate it. So Charles and I, before we got, we were, we were talking about our a little bit about our history, and we we got into moonshine and relatives that made moonshine, and and we were so today's thing's gonna be about lard, fat, and moonshine, I guess. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. So 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 for the audience that does not know what feral life is, let's talk a little bit about it, and then get into kind of. You know, it's interesting because I know some of your story, how you got started and why you found it and all that good stuff. But uh, tell everybody really about it, w what it is, where they can go, because it's, it's a good product. My wife, daughter-in-law, have been using some of it. Um, they were just to give me some some facial uh, epidermis here or epidermis. Epidermis, yeah. Epidermis. For, so Charles told me my, I had some blemishes on my, my skin. So uh, that was very hurtful. But, uh, but definitely try it out. So let's go or I'm going to be pontificating. Okay, so... Yeah, Pharaoh is really an amalgamate. Like, like I have a background in like cooking and and farming and nutrition and health and all of that, and it's, it all sort of came together in 2019, 20. Um, when I when I what I tell people is I discovered that the lard works in mysterious ways, and so we really started a company for the <laughs> puns. Uh, we share a lot in that regard. Salty oh, yeah. MF has got got major pun potential. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just, I had a, what, what I would call the most common acute skincare condition for folks like me. I got a really bad sunburn and in an act of sort of desperation and curiosity, I had a jar of lard rendered pig fat for your listeners that don't know, I had a jar of lard in the, in the refrigerator that I was cooking with. And it's like, well, I'm, this isn't going to get any better by itself. Yeah. And I live in a small town, you know, all the drugstores are closed. This was late at night and lathered up with it. And lo and behold, like a couple of days later, the sunburn was gone, but I never, and I never peeled. And that was really the, huh, that's, that's funny. Cause you always, you know, you, yeah, you, you get burnt, you yeah, get you crisp. It's like lip balm. You always, you always get, you know, that's right. Lips after you start using lip balm. Yeah. So when that didn't happen, it was like, huh, and you know, I, I I knew nothing about skincare. I still know yeah. this much about skincare. In fact, I think that's I think that's one of the more redeeming things about our brand and company is like yeah. we're we don't come from yeah. you know big pharma, big dermatology, big esthetician yeah. world. And uh, yeah, so just started tinkering around with playing with recipes and making cream, and I was running a. a uh, farming operation raising meat at the time yeah. and Atlanta was uh, I spent 25 years in Atlanta so it's okay. it's really more my home than where I grew up in East Tennessee yeah. which I, I've moved back to but yeah I came to Atlanta in 92 uh, graduated from tech in 97 and stayed until 2016 17 so um, yeah so you're, you're a local so just really just curious <coughs> East Tennessee were you from the area you're at now yeah or, okay yeah, a little town called Athens. So yeah, I grew up in a town called Athens. Yeah, spent my days in Atlanta. Yeah, tell yeah. you know where are you from? Athens, Athens, Georgia. No, yeah, Athens, don't Tennessee. like Athens, Georgia. Yeah, no, I've been by it many times when I went to Tennessee for a while, and then yep. you know my mom's uh, side of the family is from uh, East Tennessee. Yep, go DB Indians. 
So we uh, we have our own exit off the interstate and everything. It's, I saw it, man. It's, it's quite a, quite a metropolis, <laughs> the friendly city of Athens, Tennessee. <laughs> and so, uh, but yeah, just um, sort of, I, I was grunt raising meat, and I had food drops in Atlanta. I had a monthly food drop down here. I dropped food in Midtown over uh, Highlands. Uh, we had one drop up in Ball Ground, Smyrna. And so, you know, people order, yeah. I'd raise it and bring it down. And so I started making creams after after That's I tinkered around with it, just making samples and bringing them to everybody. And, you know, a year and a half later, everybody's like, that stuff works really well. And so we... That's awesome. I mean, that's awesome. So you were in the regenerative farming mm -hmm. kind of arena. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, it wasn't like it we were totally foreign to you. I mean, no. as far as like. Well, and, and our product doesn't exist without raising a healthy, happy animal. That's, right. um, it's, it's, it's one of the tenets. I really appreciate you bringing that up in sort of the intro is we are a skincare company and skincare yeah. brand, but one of our major pushes is is educating the consumer about you know how how animals should be raised right. not only as a food source right. but oh by the way this by products by, oh yeah. my god yeah. yeah every every well i mean everything 150 years ago was made out of animal fat everything yeah i mean i think i think the the problem now is uh, the everybody's done such a really good marketing and convincing people and with different scents and things like that that i think makes it appear like it's maybe better for you or more healthy. But, you know, when we were kids, I mean, I, the lo uh, the soap was made of like lard, I'm pretty sure. I mean, 100%, right? Has it been that long? Or maybe that, I don't know. I, I can remember at some point someone talking about it was lard soap. But. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if you let, so we can dive into the history history real quick. So most soap at the turn of the century, and I'm, I'm going back to, I'm pretty over. old, by the way. I, we, 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 we're uh, my birthday. I'm, I'm turning the big five zero next week, so uh, well, crazy you're a young man compared to me. So. Well, you're sweet. Yeah. Um, but so at the turn of the century, so 1899, turning over to the into the early 1900s, pre-industrial revolution, pre-refrigeration, pre lots of stuff. There was uh, most of the candles and soap in this country were made with tallow. Okay. Most of them, lard was used, right. but lard was the preeminent cooking fat. Right. So if you were frying, baking, anything, um, you, you used lard. In fact, uh, Procter & Gamble, who brought us Crisco, which is yeah, you shouldn't eat, right. by the way. Crisco <laughs> is dyed white because when they figured out how to hydrogenate cottonseed oil in 18-whatever, I started marketing it as a healthy cooking alternative fat. Everyone cooked with lard, and so yeah. they they actually bleach Crisco yeah. white so it to good. so it looks like lard. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, and, and Crisco. This is a, a, this has been one of the more entertaining parts of this adventure for me is like really diving into the history yeah. of oh yeah where where we come from on this stuff and. Crisco was born out of the invention of electricity. So Procter & Gamble figured out how to make, they, so the lard and tallow industry started doing price fixing in the late 1800s and, you know, right. protecting their, yeah, their pricing. Of course they did. Procter & Gamble wanted to be the first company to make an individual bar of soap. Back then, they, you, you, if you were a soap manufacturer, you'd make a brick of soap. Yeah. And you'd sell it to the local general store, and they'd cut it into bars and sell it to the consumer. They wanted to make individual bars of soap, ivory soap. Yeah. At the same time they wanted to do that, there was a price fixing for ingredient, for their main ingredient, tallow and lard. Yeah. And so they figured out that they could make cottonseed. They could make soap yeah. and candles out of cottonseed oil. So they scale up, buy a bunch of mills in Texas, right. To, make, to, to cotton mills to scale up their cottonseed oil capacity. Turn of the century, we invent electric. We figure out electricity. The light bulb comes along. All of a sudden, the candle market's not looking so hot. Yeah. And so, what are we going to do with all this excess, you know, cottonseed oil? Well, let's hydrogenate it. And replace lard as a. That's great. As a healthy. 
And so skincare, you know, again, skincare is another really fascinating industry that has always existed. Right. You know, the human species has been fascinated with golden brown and yeah. lush, you know, illuminated skin for yeah. forever. Uh, it was typically as an industry reserved for the elite because the ingredients historically were very right. hard to get a hold of and this, that, and the other. And then I, I would also make the argument the industry wasn't that big because most humans spent some considerable time on a weekly basis intimately involved with animal fat. Right. Because we were cooking with it. Yeah. You know, you were hunting, you were gathering, you were eviscerating yeah. an you animal. You didn't go down to Kroger and get your bacon. So, yeah. So, so the skincare industry has really grown, I would say, legitimately necessary as a few smaller and smaller percentage of general population of people have been, we, we've outsourced the butchering, we've outsourced the hunting, right. we've outsourced to all, all the direct contact with right. animal fat has been, all been outsourced, you know. Right. You go to the grocery store and just pick it up and yeah, there it is. So, so, so other than like you, you stumble on it, which I really love that you really didn't stumble on it because you've been around the whole processing of, of animals and stuff for a while. Right. But you, 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 you put this on instead of uh, some kind of lotion. It helps your sun burn. You, you don't feel peel. The light bulb goes off. I mean, your brand's pretty awesome. I mean, you've got a lot of different type of things. So like, how did you, like, you had to do some research. So how did you know what you should start with or what you should try to compete in versus not doing it? And I've got a couple other things I'm just curious about. Because someone here is, like, in the olden days, you sing cooking with lard and hear that. No no one, like, no one even, what? Okay, yeah, whatever. You say, oh, lard, what is that? Well, what do you mean? What's lard? Ooh, like, the, I see, like, that's got to be some of that in today's society because they have no connection <clears throat> With what their grandma or great grandma are like, hey, it's it's what we do, right? I, so for starters, I think I'm a glutton for punishment, right? <laughs> and so it's it's funny. So so the crew that we because I I figured out the lard before I figured out the brand and all that right. fun the stuff. The brand's and, awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. And so but but the group that I used our website and all that is out of Atlanta. They, Longtime friend of mine, Holly. If you're listening, love you. Call it Holly. Uh, fr Holly. Fresh Eggs. I, I'll give her a shout out. Fresheggs.com, I think is right. Anyway, Holly's helped build some websites for me, but she assembled a group of uh, of folks to really help develop our brand. One of the earliest questions was, Charles, do you really want to lead with like? Do you want large? Like, shouldn't we like? Shouldn't this be like the really small yeah. print, like ingredient yeah. over here? It's like, no, it's, we have to lead with it. Yeah. It, it was the farmer in me, right? It's like, yeah. I love this. Pigs are my favorite farm animal. They're like, they're jovial. They're, they're an omnivore. So everything's a potential meal. So they're, yeah. they're always curious. They're very smart. Lots of things about the pig I, I absolutely love. And so it was like, shouldn't we hide this? Shouldn't we, you know, not lead with lard? And, uh, and I was like, no, we, it's the one thing that we're doing that no one yeah. else is doing. And so it's been a challenge, but I have fun with it. It's like yeah. people, people are, you want me to put what on my face? Yeah. And I turn it around. I'm like, have you read the ingredients on yeah. what you're putting on your face now? No, and the answer is no. No, they haven't. But the, the packaging's great, and oh, they've yeah. got some model that's never put it on her damn face in the world but sitting there lying to the public about how great it is. And, oh, you got rid of this blemish right here. Bullshit. So some, yeah, you can't believe it. Photoshop. Yeah. So. Photoshop is doing a lot for cosmetics yeah, these it days. Absolutely it is. Absolutely. So. Well, I mean, tell me a little bit about um, – like what are your favorite products that you have right now? Like that you that you use daily? Like what, sure. What do you like? Tell so me. yeah, we're, well we're low in the SKU department. This is this is another thread you 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 teed up really nice. Is you know when we launch, like what are we what are we going to bring to yeah. the market? And again, I think my I'll tell you a, a quick funny story. I have a good friend whose um, wife at the time was 
uh, C-suite cosmetics person. Right. Had been for decades, so very experienced. And so call her out, you know, hey, here's what I'm thinking about doing, blah, 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 blah. She said uh, her first question out of the gate was, what's the shelf life of your product? And I'm I'm 18 months into just yeah. tinkering with this stuff, yeah. right? And so my, my honest answer was, I don't know. But I said, but I've got some got some stuff that I've had in jars now for at least six months and I crack it open and it's everything smells okay. And she goes, if you don't have a two year shelf life, you don't have a cosmetics product. <laughs> and I thought, you know, again, this is my idiocy. I'm like, well, if it doesn't spoil, you know, I tell people all the time, if it doesn't spoil, you shouldn't eat it. Yeah. Well, if it doesn't spoil, you shouldn't put it on your skin. And that's really, it was in making playing with the creams and having conversations with what I would call industry experts. Right. And it was, you know, when I when I discovered that the lard worked in mysterious ways, my the next thing I did was I went to the Google and I DIY skin cream and I made a recipe that was, you know, water emulsified with fat. It was, I'll never forget the recipe. I think it was a Katie the Wellness Mama recipe. And it had coconut oil in it. Well, I just did a one-to-one -one substitution yeah. for lard in this yeah. recipe. And it was delightful. It was this amazing recipe of uh, water, beeswax. There's your emulsifier. You have to, for, folks, if you don't know, skincare is about fat. It's a fat-based industry, but they what they want to do is they take water and they emulsify it with the fat. Now, if you're lucky, the fat is of high quality, a coconut oil or a shea butter or some other form of fat. If you're unlucky, it's most likely a petroleum derivative or a seed oil or any of these other spinoff fats. Anyway, so I make this cream, luscious cream, until about six, seven days later, it turns black, goes rancid, <laughs> like just stinks to high heaven, right? Uh, I'm like, what the hell? And so rather than go getting a degree in dermatology or esthetician or anything or chemistry i just decided at some point to to remove the water and so what's the shelf life of our product i don't know i tell people six months but but again i'm i'm also having that conversation like if, if your skin's your largest organ yeah. it eats things you shouldn't be putting stuff on it that you yeah that doesn't spoil right um and all of that's to say, I, I am absolutely enjoying having the conversation around, do you have any idea what you're putting on your skin and what it's doing to yeah. you? Well, I mean, I, th I think people don't because I don't think you get all the facts. And like, I'm, I'm really kind of um, interested now in all this uh, regenerative like farming. You know, we, we're working with um, carnivore snacks and they use, um, you know, regenerative farming. And they're real big on that and American-based farmers. And I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of amazed because I, I think like when people talk about natural or regenerative farm, I mean, this is the way it used to be, you know, <laughs> before modern, you know, modern industrialization, right? And I, I'm always just curious about like why some people don't get that. Like it's not new, right? I'm not trying mm -hmm. to, it's not new. Um, so, well, I mean, there are aspects of it that are new. What are those and, and, aspects? So yeah, and, I want to educate. Myself. Let me speak to that because I it's it's for me it's the most exciting part of yeah. this regenerative agriculture piece is so so regenerative agriculture. I, I what does that mean? Yeah. All right, first and foremost, to me it means we're building soil. So if you look at natural systems, and the best example I can give for this is the Corn Belt in the United States of America. If you don't know the Corn Belt, which is heavily depleted topsoil now, but we're talking about a part of our country that was 15, 20 feet worth of topsoil that was built over millennia of herding herbivores, yeah. in this case, bison, um, herding together, they're herd animals because you had, you know, lions, tigers, and bears off in the woods. Right. So predators keep, keep herding herbivores together and they come through and they eat the grass and they poop and they pee and they leave. And then you had migratory birds coming in behind that to clean up. This is this right. is a natural system that over millennia builds soil. It's it's about decomposing 
It's right. about turning gra lignified grass into organic matter, yeah. and and a and a, a cow's t tummy can do that in 24 hours better than anything, or yeah. or bison or anything like that. So what we're trying to do is 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 mimic that natural system. The exciting part about technology is we we have that at our we have the technology now right. to to manage these animals in a natural system type way cuz what's not here anymore well the predators are gone right right we you know we're every now and then we'll release some wolves but but cows in the field have no predators right well it was the predators in nature that kept those cows tightly bunched together and they would move together so they never they never so, yeah, they thing. never stayed in the same place right. all the time and so the technology we you know these these portable electronic energizers that carry a charge and lightweight fencing and you know these uh for for the pigs that i raise you know these portable you know very um robust feeders and waterers that we can move around very easily because they're light but when we fill them up they're you know the pigs right. don't destroy them all of that stuff wraps up into our ability as the nurturer of this planet Right. right, you know this. I mean, that, I I think this has biblical underpinnings right. that no one can argue with. You know, we were here to we're here to manage this ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. we've done a poor job of it, but we had the capacity right. to do an amazing job of it, and that's been documented. The white oak pastures down in uh, Bluffton, Georgia. If you haven't been down there, you should take uh, the family down. Uh, great example: Polyface Farms in Virginia. These are these are some places that are doing regenerative agriculture and soil building at at the tip of the spear in terms of production and 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 results. Yep. And so uh, we have these amazing tools and here here's the best part about it. It's the solution to the problem. Right. Climate change, everyone, you know, cow farts are ruining the world. Well, no. That uh, nobody I, if you believe that shit, you uh, know. If you believe that, I got some, yeah, you know, what do they say, uh, oceanfront property in Arizona <laughs> to sell you. Um, well, I'm, I'm excited you guys are doing, you know, the, the Carnivore Snacks folks are out there beating the same drum I am. Yeah. Now, they're doing it through food. I'm doing it through skincare. Yeah. Ironically, we source uh, our ingredients from the same spot That's over awesome. in North Carolina. That's yep. awesome. Yep, man. Joyce Farms is a fantastic outfit. Um do, Which is cool. Yeah, yeah really raising cool. raising food and byproducts and byproducts uh, in in the right way. And so, well, I mean, I think it makes sense. I think I think um, the 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 branding's awesome. I mean, the things that I've tried, awesome. My daughter in law said the hand cream was good. So, I mean, it, it's really what's the challenge for um, you as a young brand? And you know, obviously. You know, it just depends on what your objectives are in life, right? Is your objectives to kind of do what you're doing and spread the word and have a great product, or is it to be, you know, a really big, you know, a big company? And if if your objectives are not to be a billion dollars in industry, I mean, you still can make a huge impact just on educating people, like you said. I mean, you obviously have credibility around farming and what you've done. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like you have no credibility in in the kind of logistics of what we just, you know. Uh, said so like what's your what's your what's your objective for it for fair life what is it is it to educate people is it to, you know what is it yeah well I mean first and foremost I think we're we're our company is around education yeah um, now that jumps over into nutrition and yeah. farming and animal husbandry and all that I mean but but at our, at our core we're an education skincare company right and so I you know I end up having multiple conversations to educate consumers about skincare yeah. and agriculture and all of that which i think is awesome thank you yeah i, I, I mean, it's I it's awesome. uh i enjoy it and i and you know at the end of the day i think most brands if they don't have an educational component built into right. them you know you're you're missing something right so well some of them don't some of, it, some of it's all all sex or all all looks or all vainness. So and that works. That's a good. It's a good. It sells. It's a good marketing ploy. Sometimes. Absolutely. So we're trying to bring both. You yeah. know, like our products make you sexier. 
<laughs> make you more more young looking. More right? handsome. Well, I mean, check out my hands there. Look how smooth they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. So well, yeah. We're 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 um yes, I want to see the brand grow. I, I'm being I'm I'm patient. I'm not I, I mean, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk to you. Oh, you're hey, about we're like, we're like, well, I mean, you it's funny because when you that's the great thing about like a conversation, right? I, I knew some things about you, and you and I have talked maybe on and off for a month or so now, so mm -hmm. it's not like we're, we're not strangers by any means, but just the fact that you know, you you basically were a farmer, you didn't really, I didn't really know that about you, and you know, when it when the pieces come together. It makes sense why Pharaoh left Pharaoh Life was started, right? Hey, you grab your coffee there. It makes sense. And it's a great story. So, and I mean, we got to find a way to do some kind of moonshine thing as well. So Oh, we can figure that out. Fuel. <laughs> no, we're not, Brad. We're not, we're not, we're making fuel. <laughs> so your aspirations for the brand, obviously you're you you're very knowledgeable. You know a lot about this and you know, I love the brand. My kids love the brand. My wife loved the brand. You know, just whoever did your branding is awesome. Thank I mean, you. I, you know, it's very clean, uh, very friendly, and I think it's perfect for, I mean, you're saying is Lard help us. Is that right? Lard, lard help us. The Lard <laughs> works in mysterious ways. Just out here doing the Lard's work. <laughs> it's, Man, just, it's ingenious. And I Thank I, you. If you're listening out there, you got you have to go to Fair Life and and try uh, some of their products. I have um, Charles and Grace's enough. We have a code uh, that we'll put out uh, after um, in the notes. But do you remember the code? Salty MF. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> remember the code. <laughs> here's a here's a funny. <laughs> there you go. Salty MF. Is it all caps or not? Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't Salty matter. MF. Salty MF. Save save you fifteen percent off anything we got. Man, so. salt and pork go together like you know ham mm. and eggs. I did. Br I brought you some of that prosciutto. Oh, I know. Oh, that's right. I he brought did. him a it's, special present. I'm uh, gonna eat that too. It's yeah, nice. we've had a uh, a ham hanging for now four years. That's so this is like you know fine aged, you know Spanish ham, but but. Uh, but Tennessee style. Tennessee style. Tennessee oh, style. I mean, I've got roots in Tennessee. So. Well, you know, factoids like that also speak to, you know, our job is to honor and educate people about how amazing the pig is. As yeah. a, I mean, I would, I would argue this country would not be where it is were it not for high quality pork, yeah. because you can salt it, and. Pre refrigeration, you know, it can it can it can be a viable food source for many many years. Oh, no doubt. Well, and shit, you know, bacon, smoked bacon. I put bacon on anything. I'll put bacon. You know, I'll put it in my you should. Bloody Marys, anything, man. It's good stuff. You should. I mean, it's good. I mean, I love it. I mean, you spend a life around that raising these animals. You know the animals. The byproduct side of it, you've created a cool ass. You know, really kind of cosmetics mini cosmetics type company. I think it's awesome. I mean, I, I'm going to let you say whatever you want to say about, because we haven't really talked a lot about the product itself and, and what you're doing. And Let's I, do that. I don't want to push you to it, but I, I kind of, I want to promote it. I, I'm, well, let's I, have I'm some fun in an educational way. Let's, let's do go. that. So what is a skincare juggernaut company, which by the way is the same as Big Pharma, is the same as Big Food, if you if you look at the concentration of power and products, you know we have this perception as consumers Let's get that we have. Let's stir the shit here. Oh, we go. no, no, I'm, here I'm we, ready. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. All right. So you, <laughs> a consumer <laughs> has the perception of choice, right? If you go to a CVS or a pharmaceutical, you know, go to a pharmacy tomorrow, walk through the skincare section, go to a belt, you know, a, 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 a whatever any, mall, yeah. go anywhere, look at look at look at the skincare. You've got millions of choices, AM cream, night cream, upper eye, lower eye cream. You know, I mean, you've got, you've got a specific product for a gazillion different things. You've got that. Then you've got brands galore. These are all every, all of them 
are effectively owned by four, five, six companies. Yep. Uh, and, and those companies often are either big food or big pharma, or in many cases, both. Procter & Gamble, as a great example, stretches across food and cosmetics oh, and yeah, pharma and all that. And so we've got this perception of choice. Uh, the ingredients used in these products are absolutely horrid. The preeminent Consumer Protection Act for skin care is called the Food and Cosmetics Act of 1938. It was written in 1938, which, by the way, coincidentally is the same year that the American Academy of Dermatology was founded. Interesting. <laughs> Largest and oldest dermatological um, accreditation institute in the country. Uh, 27 corporate sponsors, all big pharma, by the way. Um, and so it, it, I, if, it, if it wasn't true, I couldn't yeah. say it. Or look it up yourself. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we've got we've got all of that, and here I am with four SKUs. You know, yeah. I have I have a a body cream, our our skin food. So our, here are our four products: skin food that comes scented and unscented, <laughs> face food that comes scented and unscented. <laughs> we have a sublingual CBD elixir uh, uh, that we're so we're promoting sort of the benefits of cannabidiol. That's a hemp plant derivative, for those that don't know, uh, through the lens of skincare. Lowers inflammation, reduces anxiety, helps you sleep, all Makes of those sense. things promote optimal skin. And then we, our newest product, the Epic Dermis, uh, you know, yeah. if you want an Epic Dermis, then you should use Epic Dermis. Epic Dermis I, I mean, right there. It, the whole product yeah. line is a pun, you know? I mean, why not? So oh, that yeah. was our, that's our newest product. We launched it last spring and it was, it was answering a consumer question, which was, I've got these, you've seen our jars, you yeah. know, we do this really high-end nice. bathroom, kitchen, countertop product. You know, we're, yeah. we're compete. I want to compete uh, in the luxurious side of skincare. Right. Right. And so that's where we started. But like literally out of the gate, the question was, when are you going to have a product that I can pack in my purse that, that, that travels? Yeah more friendly. And so we, we, we launched Epidermis last fall, but just four SKUs, right? And so the, the question is, well, what do I use the product for? Your skin. You feed your skin. <laughs> it's to nourish your skin. I know, but but for what? Well, do it you have puts dry... the lotion on the skin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Now we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> now we're gonna have some fun. But 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 the reality is, everyone's been psyoped into. Well, you need a different cream for the morning and night. You need a different. If your skin's dry, oh, use this. Yeah. Is your skin red? Oh, use this. And it's like that that's called maximizing your revenue per customer for sure and, and that that's that's great in business and everything but like it, it is it's it's your i mean i think like i see people put all this stuff i don't i really don't my skin might look terrible terrible i have no idea but i just don't use a lot of type stuff like that because i mean to be honest with you i you know i i don't know i just like i don't know you how would you go in like go in and know which skin cream Right, just like you said, you went into Walmart or wherever you went, uh, Belks or whatever you went, and literally no, I'm gonna want something that has it, not a ton of acidic stuff or whatever the ingredients mm -hmm. are. I'm gonna want something that I know is in lard to me. I mean, that make when you told me that, like even though people are like, oh wow, it kind of made sense, even though I don't know shit about cosmetics, I don't know anything about the ingredients. But like when you said that, I was like, yeah, that, that, I mean, I makes sense to me. Do you hunt growing up? Mm -hmm. Deer, deer, yeah. yeah. Most hunters intuitively get what I'm talking about right. because they've been elbow deep in eviscerating yeah. a carcass, yeah. and your skin always feels oh, yeah. great yeah, when you're really, done yeah, really cleaning does. a deer. Uh, you know, butchers. Yeah. I don't. I don't have to explain my product to a butcher. Yeah. Or a hunter, uh, which is why. which is great. Yeah. So. Yeah. We, so we need to find all right call out there to any women bow hunters or rifle hunters or anything outdoors fishing whatever you're doing women hunters out there let's step up and get you using feral life and let you can you know you understand what's going on and you would believe it and use it that's a call out to anybody who does it you want to call anyone out that you hey man it's whatever's your show bro uh, well and i'm I, just I, trying to help you out here i, I mean, appreciate it and, and and buy some skin <laughs> food for your man too so that old um, that old crusty bastard 
He needs it. He needs <laughs> it. I haven't had I haven't had razor burn in three years, which I haven't either. Well, <laughs> you, you're you're in a different boat than me. Although I, I'm pretty happy with my stash. Stash, stash is a fairly new development. You got a good stash. Uh, thank you. Thank you. But yeah, say that say that about your um, about basically razor burn because I mean, I, like I hated, I really didn't like shaving because because of that. I'd get razor for sure. Burn all the time. So, in the skincare condition world, this is a good segue. In the skincare condition world, you have two predominant types of problems: acute and chronic. Right. I would say any burn, but most specifically razor burn, sunburn, and wind burn are probably your three most common acute skin care conditions. Right. If it's got anything to do with the skin being dry and burned, you're going to want to try our product. Yeah. It is unbelievable. I have not had, again, some, you know, I'd get it right here on my Adam's apple and, you know, right along your collar line if you ever wore yeah. dress shirts and stuff like that. That's because we're hairy, dude. Well, fair yeah. enough. But <laughs> habitually, you know, it's like, and you're right, you, you, you dread shaving. Yeah. Like you just dread it because you know it's coming. I haven't had that in three years, which is, you know, for me is fantastic. So think about the convenience of not yeah. having that. And so uh, that's that's a big piece. And sunburn, windburn, same thing. Yeah. Now, over here on the chronic side of the house, and, and again, I get emails and calls all the time, eczema, psoriasis, chelitis, rosacea, all of these various chronic skin conditions. Right. Uh, I always, I, I'm very transparent with people. There's two sides to that coin. Let's talk about what we can use topically. Our products are fantastic, but you also need to look under the carriage. What are yeah. you eating? Yeah. You know, a lot of these fall under this autoimmune yeah, response, right? right? It's and not a cure all. I mean, just it's not a cure all, but yeah. but but again, go to your average everyday run of the mill dermatologist or esthetician. Are they talking about getting eight hours of sleep, hydrating, you know, eating real food, staying away from high, you know, high amounts of sugar intake, all these things that look to be causative in the underlying chronic right. skin care world. Yeah. And so if you're not willing to have the conversation with someone and say, hey, yeah, topically, our stuff's amazing. Yeah. It's it's amazing for two reasons. One is we're using fats that align with human biology more closely. You're not a coconut. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not an avocado. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've met a few, well, few avocado heads. Fair, fair enough. Them. Fair enough. But, you know, I, and I'm not here, like, <laughs> disparaging coconut oil or shea butter or any of these other things, but you're you're not a shea. You're a... Yeah. You're a monogastric omnivore. You're a yeah. mammal, and so let's use let's use some mammalian fat to to make yeah. your skin glow. So there's that piece, and then also if you're dealing with a chronic, never really goes away skin condition, there are some underlying things that you should probably try to address if you want a long term right. solution. Yeah, obviously. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, no product in the world is going to solve if you've got if you've got something really wrong with you other than on the skin condition outside. Your diet, your stress, your whatever causes a lot of illnesses. So yeah, no, it can. Yeah, you know. So although I will say, if you have a sunburn, wind burn, sunburn, razor wind burn. burn. I got your product. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I got your product. That's not from you. Uh, you know, eating two pounds of sugar a day and drinking Cokes. and yeah. If you, you have know, a dog and you want your dog to love you more. Oh, yeah. Put a little of our product on your <laughs> on your skin. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious, like I, I had scars on my hands from something. Mm -hmm. What have you ever tried to mess around like like just to keep like um, like if you've had a scar or something's healing from stitches yep. to use that? Yep. I, I, I have a scar like here. And I have one on my belly from I had a splenectomy. It's a very old scar, yeah. thirty something years old. But, but yeah, I had a. Um, I'm just curious. I'm looking at, like logically. I'm thinking that as far as because they say you know use coconut oil, whatever, to do that, and everyone does it. I'm just curious, like if that from a healing scar would it would it be any help to it? Yes. Okay. I, I've put our I've put our products in the hands of post tattoo victims, which again is just a blemish on the skin. Yep. Works amazingly. Um, any scarring, 
it, I have, I, I did a, I did a, I documented this. This is maybe six months ago. I went in, I was in jujitsu class and it was a gi class and I got, I got my hand pinned to my face. You know, if you've, yeah. if you've done jujitsu, yeah. I'm a no stripe blue belt. So I'm way down in the pecking order. Anyway, I long story short is I had my thumb. I was trying to pull my arm out and my thumbnail Caught just, it. just yeah. tore the side of my head open. Like you can't imagine. Well, so for six, seven days, I'm every day, and I took pictures and videos, no scars. Yeah, yeah I was no just because it, I mean, I'm lo- just thinking logically. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, consult your doctor, but the reality of it is, I would just think that would make sense as far as the animal fat um, L- from a human perspective. So, so our our glands, human gl- skin glands, make sebum is the is the natural oil that humans produce in our right. glands. The closest exogenous substance on planet Earth to human sebum is lard. Wow. And so if you think about yeah. our skin's a lock, this is the key kind of conversation. And so when it comes to wound healing yeah. or scar healing, you know, all you're trying to do is not get in the way of, right. of that process. And, and candidly, most creams because of the nature of the ingredients and how they manufacture it and the shelf life right. have have substances in there that don't agree with your biology. Oh, yeah. Right. And so, Absolutely. you know, our our stuff is amazing not only because of what's in it, smart lard, but also what's not in it, which is just copious amounts of chemicals that right. you can't pronounce that help keep this product from going rancid on the shelf. Yeah, I I, I, lo- I love it. I mean, I like I said, I I'm not going back. I want those women hunters, fishermen, outdoors. Uh, I want a challenge out there. I want them to step up. Well, step and up. you know, I, I, you need to start calling people out, bro. You you got like, who do you want me to call I don't out? Oh, pick your famous woman hunter. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there's some there's some uh, there's some gals doing it right in the in the social media female hunter. Yeah, I forget who I'm uh, who I follow now. A couple of them. Well, I, I mean, it, it, to me, even like there's so many, there's so many kind of downstream like avenues or sub like categories to go after that I think would make a lot of sense. So I'm, I, I want to put a salty twist to it. I want. I, well, See, I'm, I'm going to do for the for the sunburn. We're going to have the salty MF, right? I'm ready. The salty MF Feral Life Sunburn Cream. I'm, I'm ready. I mean, it may be edgy. The packaging is going to be a little. We don't offend anybody, but uh, well, we actually do, but. Um, well, we're we're already working on some other um, lubricating products too that uh, that I think you should have a direct direct involvement with. I mean, if we're if we're we going to talk offline, if we're going branding, let's let's hit it hard. Here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll talk offline, but we're yeah. in. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, because that's the most more fun. fun to put in to pull out. <laughs> I wore I wore this shirt for for uh, the tip of the day, the salty tip of the day. More fun to put in than pull out. But um, yeah, I man, think I, the stars are aligning right now. <laughs> you know, hey, look, we're into anything that's fun. You're a good person. I, I, your history. I love anybody that actually can back and understands what they're doing. And I, I mean, hell, you, you, you raised pigs. You have yeah. pigs. You, so the, you, so the, you, you've been <laughs> in that shit. You so you've been in that whole regenerative farming thing. I mean, shit. I mean, we need to kick you up with uh, carnivore snacks. We need to figure out how to. Oh, how I to- talked to Brian uh, not not too long ago. Um, I see them so we we conference in the same circle. Oh, so there's sure. a there's an awesome actually it'd be fun for y'all to come out for this. Um it's a hack your health is the name of it now, it is formerly called KetoCon. It's a big health yeah, hacking yeah. conference in Austin. You've been to Austin? I have a long time ago. But okay. It, it's worth going back. Yeah. Um like the, the bar scene and really cool. Stuff. Lots of lots of cool stuff going on uh in Austin. But Texas uh, but I'll run into them yeah. there. Uh West Day. You know, again, we're we're we end up in a lot of the same circles, they're just regenerative folks. ag. Yeah. And, and well, and they're they're crushing it. Yeah, they're, they're doing folks. such a great job. Really good folks. And then also, you know, we had Rob Kane on. I think that's maybe how that's we, how we met. Yeah, we got introduced yep. um with um Baja Salt Company. I definitely want to do some stuff with them, but it's 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 really it's really neat to when you kind of start to run in all these kind of entrepreneurial companies, really getting started, doing some cool things against kind of the 
the big pharmaceuticals or the big food manufacturers. And I mean, shit, that's, that's what we like. And at that, um, since, since, uh, Schumer is trying to get rid of the Zins in the world and tell people what they can do. I'm going to put in a Schumer right here on the show for everybody. There we go. There you go. That's I what love I it. <laughs> That's what I think about. Put a, put a uppy decky Schumer. But anyways, people trying to tell individuals what they can do and what they can't do. I, I love, I love your passion for it. You're going to be a success. We, I want to do some fun stuff with you. Like even on a, it's some kind of co-brand. Let's we'll figure it out. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun together. I don't know if I want any any weird dudes rubbing oil all over them stuff. So no, we really think no, no. Well, <laughs> you, you look one time at deer camp and uh, huh. yeah. <laughs> no, well, I, I need your help building a a a, a team of of successful brand ambassadors. Um, do you remember the movie Rush Hour? Yeah, it was with hilarious. Chris Tucker. Oh yeah, hilarious. So one of the greatest lines in that movie is uh, he, he, his character meets Heather Locklear for the first time. And, of course, Heather is in, as iconic as yeah. they come. And he looks at her and he goes, fat. And, and, uh, and she's offended, you know, and yeah. she's like, P-H-A-T, pretty hot and tempting. Yeah. I want to come up with a fat divas yeah. group of brand oh, ambassadors awesome. P-H-A-T, because yeah. our product makes you pretty hot and tempting. Yeah, that's awesome. So we need to do that. And yeah, yeah, I, I think we've got. I think we could have a lot of fun together. Yeah. Um, I do want to see the brand grow. Yeah, it works. I'll stand by. Yeah, the efficacy of our product, and yeah. so I'm. I'm okay being the world's greatest beauty secret that no one knows yeah. about for well, now. Well, I mean, I think I think the fact is smart. You know, you've got you got you know you you kind of live or die by you know key key products, key SKUs, anyways, right? I eat some SKUs, but. I mean, people get started, I and mean, when we first started, there's like raisin brand cereal. There's only, you know, five. Now there's, you know, thousands of type of cereal, right? But the point in that, it it doesn't really matter. I mean, if if the product works for multiple things, so you said, it's your skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your skin. I mean, you don't need an upper eye, lower eye, inside ear, right on your chin. I mean, it. Some of that shit's silly stuff. Well, I. I, mean, I personally, I'm not a doctor now. Not well, a doctor, I, not a, I not recognize a registered doctor. The, the skincare industry wants you to treat this right. differently than everything down here. And intuitively, that does make sense, right? I mean, right. we have a face product, and it's fantastic. It's formulated differently right. than our body product. It works great. I rarely use it because I just personally, I use our body product on my face. But I also know that consumers... S some want to specifically a face. want that yeah. facial product, yeah. right? Beyond that, I'm like facial AM versus facial PM cream. Like, no, I, I, Dude, I got that's that's great, a conversation I'm not willing to. T ideas, yeah, t shirt ideas. But anyway. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Well, we've only got one t shirt. It's the Lard Works in Mysterious Wait, Ways, but I. Is but it I, this one? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna show yeah. everybody. There we go. There you go. Back. Powered by Smart Lard. That's right. So that's awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll wear it with, with pride. Absolutely. Well, in closing, like what what else would you like? First of all, we need to tell the audience where to go, how, how to get the how to get you know the skincare um, products you have. Um, let's do it. Where I mean, where to go, how to get it. So you guys are only online. Are you in? Are you trying to go into retail right now or not? I know we we don't like Salty does not. Yep. We're not in retail, and there's reasons why we don't want to do that. But we're having conversations along going into right. retail. Um, I'm exploring some some formulations that might be able to extend to shelf life. You know, retail's tough if you've oh, if yeah, you've got absolutely. a six month shelf life. Yeah, it is. And so, um, well, to answer your first question, Faro F A R R O W dot Life is our website. So that's the best place to go. We've got social media. Uh, you can you can find our Instagram page and all that from from the website. So I'll just I'll give that a, address. We're having conversations about brick and mortar, about wholesale, but right now my focus is going direct to consumer. Right. You know, we're still a, a very much a mom and pop, and yeah. so I, I'm okay with you know, yeah, I just mean, just that it, focus. Yeah, and that's I mean it. 
you know, every, every business typically, unless, you know, it's private equity funded or people kind of merge some companies together and really went after it. I mean, it has to start with an entrepreneur and their passion for something. Yep. You know, we'll be there though. And, I think this year we'll be, we'll, we'll have some stores. I think we have, we're having some conversations. So I, I believe that there will be, there will come a point in 2024 where you can potentially product purchase a product of ours on a shelf in certain stores. Well, I mean, when you told me you, you they they graciously sent um, my wife and daughter along some some product, and I mean it it was quick anyways. I mean I don't I got it as soon as you said hey we're sending you stuff. Uh, the packaging everything was awesome. Came the the nice touch you guys have on the handwritten notes is um, I like that. I mean I to me that means something more than whatever. You know, we do that with Salty. Everybody gets a personalized note when they buy something from it. It may not come in the package, but they'll get a note a yep. week later. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of people have said, you know, that's awesome. I really, I like, I appreciate someone took the time to do that. And uh, I, I think it matters. I mean, people should buy from local people that they know and are good damn people. And then know what they did. What you know, you know what you're doing. You've been in this. You've, you've been, whether you're doing this skincare, you've been in and around it for yep. twenty something years. It's not like me all of a sudden say I'm going to go <laughs> do this skincare. I don't know shit about it, right? I, I think you've done a good job. I love the brand. I'd love to do some more stuff with you. Uh, just just co-branding or fun. It's it's fun. Agreed. And, uh, and people, you know, only only good things can come out of it. You know, we're, we, we know what the products are, 100% natural. It's not, you know, we're not dumping chemicals and things in there and mixing it out in the back of a barrel. So what would you like to tell our audience that has been listening, you know, to us? Um, like, anything you want to tell them? You, you, you won't be upset trying our products. Right. They, they, they work for a, a million different things. We appreciate the support. Oh, uh, we're, 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 a, we're a young brand and, and, and we're having, we're trying to have as much fun and educate the consumer as much as possible all along the way. And so, you know, that's when it takes off though. I mean, that's, you find one person that really believes and understands what you're doing and really likes it and promotes it. And that's, that's how brands like even like salty and feral life and probably even carnivore snacks, they've been around now they're exploding, but like, that's how it starts. That's right. Hey, try this meat chip thing like, you know, <laughs> protein. It's good for you. What? I mean, that's how it starts. That's how you help entrepreneurs um, get started by helping them promote it if you love the brand and talking about it, you know, tweeting about it, you know, Instagram, tagging. That really helps small businesses, as we know from a salty perspective now. User-generated stuff that people really love our brand Top notch. I mean, anything we can do from a marketing side or advertising side, I'd rather have a happy customer that likes what we're about, believes in what we're doing, than pay an ad agency a lot of money to come up with some cool saying, right? I mean, it. I just, I just, I think I, I call out to everybody out there that's doing the work, has ideas, building products. Let's fucking go. Let's do it. Let's do it. I definitely want to do a co-brand with you. Oh, uh, we'll have some fun. So, yeah. Also, so. Um, to the listening on the show today, remember, uh, pharaoh.life, uh, if you use Salty MF, baby, you're getting a discount out there. So de definitely uh, give it a try. Give one of the one of the four SKUs a try. And, you know, if you're if you're wind now, if everybody's getting wind burn. I need to take this up to uh, Beach Mountain. We're going to do oh, for sure. snowboarding up there. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely use it. Yep. We've got a great testimonial from uh, some some young daughters of a good friend of mine windburn you know from yeah. a skiing trip skiing, yeah. and uh you know yeah we got the, we got to eat the, the skiing pig the snowboarding pig I, i'm telling you we've got <laughs> you, your, your goat and my pig oh, need yeah. to hang out a lot yeah, more definitely. That's I, definitely i think they would be fast friends well, I, I i love i love the product side of this um even like with baja salt company call out to those guys i've been using like they have this saline that you just put in your water oh. And I, I've been, you know, I'd make, I get cramps in the middle of the night. You can't believe like in my legs, which, you know, maybe I'm just old, but I literally, when I go to the gym, I put that in my water and I drink it. And like, I haven't like, I don't know, Rob was on our show four or five months ago, six months ago, whatever it was. And uh, so Rob, if you're out there listening, brother, yeah, I, I, I put that in my water when I go to the gym and I, it, it works. 
I don't know anything about, you know, what it's doing <laughs> to me inside and, and all the good things about it. I'm a simple man, but uh, shit, it works. It's just so cool. Well, his, his interview with you is great. You know, again, if you listen to the what they say, they say avoid salt. Yeah, table salt. They say avoid salt. salt. They don't even. They, they, so they don't tell yeah, you what. table salts over here. Yeah, Baja Gold's over here, bro. Yeah. And so you know, it's like a lot of guys. I don't have skincare. Yeah. I don't need skincare. Well, you have a skincare routine. Let's just talk about what you're using to put on your right. skin when you choose to do that. And so I don't know if Wild Willie's is listening out there, but you know all that beard oil and. Uh, kind of beer growth stuff maybe we need to, we, we need to get pharaoh dot life pharaoh dot life out there and get something going for all the beard guys little, out little, there that are grooming the beards you know little double up you know? hint hint <laughs> hint hint warning this is a hint well it, i've enjoyed having you brother i mean you're welcome here anytime if you're traveling back and forth from east tennessee to atlanta your brother so we we are going to talk about that those that moon, what did we call it? You couldn't say, you're not allowed to say moonshine. What, what were you saying? Fuel. <laughs> fuel. We're making, we're, we're going to talk about how to make fuel. <laughs> Mental fuel. That, that'll that be our, that'll be I our think you can. I think you can make up to 10 gallons of fuel yeah. <laughs> for personal use, depending on the state well, you live I'll in. So next, next Saturday, yeah. so we can start making some personal yeah. fuel. Man, that's awesome. Well, you're you're a good person and and I love the energy and I, I love the brand. Check it out, Pharaoh.life out there, Salt Nation. Uh anything closing to the to the crew while we're I just thank you. I mean, this has really been a joy for me. I, I always I, I, I like talking in person. Yeah, you know, I've been on a couple podcasts before and a lot of them are virtual. But yeah. the, being able to come in studio, I love your studio. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm gonna have to come back when you, you get all the back. all the digs going. Yeah, it, so yeah, so. the digs, I mean, I, I'm telling you, Go Nation out there, it is pretty badass. And really special thanks to Ad Normus Mark Rowe out there. Um when he came in, Mark does a lot of good stuff out there. He he raps uh ESPN buses, game day. He does some really cool stuff. And I, we could not have picked a better person uh, to redesign our studio. So right right now it's kind of in, in shambles, but uh, it's it's just going to be amazing. So tune in. I think I think we're two weeks out, but we'll, we'll do a big launch on it and we'll have to have you come down. So I think we, uh, we've got a pretty big space out here for the building. I think we're probably going to do a, um, a block party this summer. So I'll have to have you back down, have some bands. We call um, those gathering lathers. Gathers and so lathers. So I'll bring like, down the ladder. Yeah, it'll be sun. We'll put all that out, but that's going to be fun. So uh, uh, also a call out uh, to Italian, Italian Village over there. Uh, we're going to do something in the uh, spring over there. We're going to have a block party over, um, over locally. Uh, so special call out to them. We really appreciate them. So Salty Nation, uh, we, we were talking to Charles Mayfield today. He's the founder of Pharaoh.life. Um, check them out. Um, they've got some great products. Uh, give it a try. Looking out there for those women hunters, outdoors, hikers. Uh, challenge you to try to take it, take a look. And uh, we'll, we'll send our video crew to sit down and talk with you about your experience personally, no matter where you are. So hopefully you're in like New Zealand or some cool spot. No, a place like that hunting red stag uh but if uh, if not this cool you can be a deer hunter or trophy hunter but that's all today goat nation we really appreciate you let's go Stag.